Thanks for that weather update, Paul. I'd better make sure I bring my umbrella tomorrow morning. Me too. We now move on to today's biggest news with Child of the Century. Here's TSE reporter Summer Day at the courthouse with our top story. That's right, Liz. The jury is still in deliberation. They have been sequestered since day one of the trial. Teenager Goldilocks Jones is accused of breaking and entering, destruction of property, fleeing the scene of a crime, attempted murder, carjacking, and aggravated manslaughter. She is being tried as an adult, and if found guilty, could be sentenced to the death penalty. As you'll see in these highlights from the trial, this case is anything but simple. Day one of the trial started with the prosecutor's star witness, Baby Bear, on the stand. Baby Bear, can you tell us in your own words what happens on the morning of October 1st, 2006? We were waiting for our breakfast to cool some, and Papa Bear suggested we take a walk. We were only gone about 10 minutes. When we arrived home, the front door was open. Someone had eaten our porridge and broken my favorite chair. I was so scared. Then we went upstairs and found someone sleeping in my bed. She woke up and saw us there, then freaked out. I think she was on drugs or something. She grabbed a huge piece of wood and hit my papa bear right in the head. Then she ran away. Is that person in this courtroom today, baby bear? Yeah, she's right there. No further questions, Your Honor. But the story doesn't end there. After the confrontation at the bear's house, where Goldilocks allegedly smacked Papa Bear in the head with a two by four, she ran down the stairs and out the back door. She left a trail of devastation in her wake, carjacking a Hummer from the old lady who lives in a shoe and unable to drive it, plowed into Peter Peter Pumpkin Eater's home, killing his lovely wife, Louisbelle. The experts have put together a simulation of this event. Goldilocks' attorneys were up next, questioning her mother, who had an emotional breakdown on the stand. Mrs. Jones, were you with Goldilocks on the day in question? No, ma'am. She said she was going to the library with her friend Little Red Riding Hood, and they were going to study. And you believed her? She's a good girl, really, I swear. It's just that her father left us when she was only two, and I've had to raise her all by myself. I've worked day and night to provide for her. This isn't her fault. Maybe if I was home more, or paid more attention to her, Please, please, she's innocent. You must believe me. Don't take my baby away from me. She's all I have. <laughs> Day three, the trial had some surprises for Goldilocks' best friend and alibi, Little Red Riding Hood. Now, Miss Hood, from what you've told us, Goldilocks is with you on the morning in question, correct? Yes, ma'am. We were at my house watching TV. And neither of you left the house that morning. That's correct. Well, I don't think you're telling us the truth. I'm sorry you feel that way, but I would never lie about something like this. I think you're lying, but not to protect your friend, but to protect yourself. I don't know what you mean. Tell me, Miss Hood, how friendly are you with the Big Bad Wolf? I, I, I don't know what you're talking about. I think you do. You have been secretly meeting with Mr. Wolf on Sunday mornings, and you don't want your quarterback boyfriend, Little Boy Blue, finding out about it now, do you? You can't prove anything! Objection, Your Honor. Miss Hood is not on trial. She is clearly badgering the witness. She has no proof. Objection overruled. Thank you, Your Honor. We would like to enter into evidence this videotape taken from a surveillance camera. It clearly shows Miss Hood and Mr. Wolf on the morning in question. The witness is lying to protect her friend and herself. We have a copy of the videotape to show you now. Roll it! On the final day of the trial, the defense, in a bold move, put Goldilocks herself on the stand. Goldilocks, could you tell us what happened on the morning of October 1st, 2006? It started off like any other Sunday morning. I was up early and I told my mother I was going to the library with Little Red Riding Hood. We always studied on Sundays because of all the pressure we were under from the FCAT test. FCAT, FCAT, FCAT. It's enough to drive you crazy. When I got to her house, she wasn't there. So I just sat on her porch and worked in my FCAT workbook. Do you know what that's like? Read this passage. Write this essay. You have to pass the FCAT to graduate from high school. X plus Y minus 3 equals what number? I just couldn't take the pressure anymore. My mom worked so hard to give us a good life, and the FCAT was going to take that all away. I saw the Bear family leave, and something inside of me saw a way out. I used a credit card to open the door. I ate their porridge, broke their chairs, and after all that, I fell asleep in Baby Bear's bed. But then they came home, and I panicked. 
I think there was something strange in that porridge because I was seeing double. I grabbed the first thing I could and I swung. Then I ran down the stairs and out the door. But I didn't carjack the Hummer from the old lady who lives in a shoe, and I certainly didn't crash it into Peter Peter Pumpkin Eater's house and kill his lovely wife. Honest, it wasn't me. I've been set up by Little Boy Blue. He saw Little Red and Big Bad together and he went crazy. He carjacked the Hummer and he crashed it. It was blamed on me because of the whole Bear's House incident. It makes for good TV, you know. I'm innocent, you must believe me. Uh-huh, okay. Yes, I've got it, Lester. You don't have to... Okay, I've just gotten word that the jury has reached a decision. We now go live to the courtroom. Jury, have you reached a decision? We have, Your Honor. What say you? On the count of breaking and entering, we find the defendant guilty. On the count of destruction of property, we find the defendant guilty. On the count of fleeing the scene of a crime, we find the defendant guilty. On the count of attempted murder, we find the defendant not guilty. On the count of carjacking, we find the defendant not guilty. On the count of aggravated manslaughter, we find the defendant not guilty. It looks like the jury bought Goldilocks' story about being too stressed from too much FCAT testing and her brilliant move of placing the blame on the jealous quarterback, Little Boy Blue. Hopefully Goldilocks has learned her lesson and learned how to manage her stress better in the future. Summer Day, TSC News.